Hello, today we're gonna go through a day in the life of a Forcepoint Enterprise DLP administrator. When I log into this system, this is going to be the single pane of glass for the Forcepoint web security, email, and DLP. This is the traditional enterprise uh, solution that has been out for 10 plus years. When you first log in, you are going to come up with the dashboard. For this demo, I'm specifically going to work on uh, creating a policy as well as going through kind of the in incident management and workflow. So there is all kinds of different levels of role-based access control on here, and we are just logged on as, a, uh, as an administrator. First, I'm gonna go into the, the policies themselves. We have the concept here of policy levels. Uh, this can either be a flat construct or we can have it in a hierarchy. And basically what we're doing here is that each one of these levels, if we find a particular match, we will stop there and not continue through. So you have a lot of flexibility as to how you uh, have those created. I'm going to go down here and just create a new rule uh, right under here. One of the things that we do have that makes it really nice is we do have predefined policies. So you can choose specific industries like healthcare, finance, government, and then you can also do geographic regions either by country or down to uh, specific states. And we will auto propagate the types of rules that would typically apply to uh, end users within those uh, locations. So just going in here, creating a new rule, add a rule. Example rule for the conditions, we are going to do a mix of fingerprinting. So this is going to be exact data matching. So we have already uh, fingerprinted some structured data, either via SQL or um, CSV or something like that. So I've picked the three fields that I want to reference. And in addition to that, we're going to use a predefined classifier. In this case, I'm going to use one for credit card numbers. Search on that. Forcepoint has the highest efficacy when it comes to pre bulk classifiers, specifically around things like uh, credit cards, social security numbers, things like that. Uh, and that has definitely been proven out using real world false positive data that uh, customers have uh, collected. So basically, I'm going to do two conditions uh, if fingerprinting of these three columns and also the um, the endpoint or also the uh, credit card number, then we are going to consider that a match. And we can do Boolean logic if and or not. So next up is the severity in action. Up at the top here, you've got the legacy way DLP has been run for the past 10 years. Uh, you know, how many credit cards in an email? Are we going to allow it, block it, warn it? The problem is there's no context around any of that. I know that you've had some exposure to our risk adaptive piece. This allows you to do a one-to-one -one mapping of the types of activities. So we can do a, uh, an end user coaching. We can audit the low end. Here we're going to encrypt files, copy to the thumb drive. Here we're going to do endpoint DVR recording, uh, which is accomplished via our insider threat endpoint. And here, uh, since they're also running CrowdStrike, we're gonna drop them into uh, isolation, endpoint isolation, if it hits the risk level five. For sources, you've got a whole range of Active Directory entities and other options that you can select from. We also have the concept of the devices being on-prem or roaming. So you can allow things like network attached storage or printing when on-prem, but block those when roaming. For the destinations, this single rule covers both the network DLP as well as the endpoint. So if we look at network email, we've got a whole range of destinations and things we can do on the direction. We can look at outbound only or inbound and internal. For web, we have multiple channels, both endpoint and uh, and gateway based. This could either be our proxies or ICAP. Um, for the cloud channels, we've got some fun stuff where we can actually look at both uploading and downloading. And for the uh, 
the DLP cloud channel. Uh, we've got that either for API or inline. We can cover endpoint printing, USB uh, endpoint applications. We can get in here and we can look at things like uh, AirDrop for Macs. Uh, so any Bluetooth type communications, we can monitor that as well. And I think we've covered most of the, uh, the, the channels that we wanted to look at here. And then basically what you do is you would save this out and deploy it to the endpoints just for the, uh, to save a little bit of time. We're gonna jump right into the, the reporting aspect of it to show what kind of the incident management workflow side looks like. So we've got a bunch of pre-built workflows. We can assign off these events to specific uh, people. We can change the status. You can create your own. Um, change the severity, you can or ignore them, create specific tabs, uh, tags, and add comments. You can download one or batch uh, incidents. You've also has the ability to do remediation scripts. This could be things like release from email quarantine uh, or uh, send some sort of a notification to someone. We can escalate to uh, that person's director and manager and active directory. Um, looking at a specific event here, this was sent over the network channel. We have endpoint activities all kind of rolling up to the same UI. This was a match on uh, some HIPAA information, date of birth, uh, social security numbers. And it turns out this was actually done by network OCR. So we actually have the forensic uh, data here available to us. We can download that and we take a look at it right here. This was a X-ray JPEG with the date of birth, social security number, and full name. So that's what it uh, matched off of there. We have the ability to do all kinds of advanced properties, looking at uh, details around that specific event. And this information varies depending on whether it came from the network channel or the, the endpoint. Uh, the history, any sort of activity around workflow, or if the end user does the little coaching pop-up, all of that is notified here you have the ability to do all kinds of customization and uh, sorting of the, uh, the different views uh, and the different types of channels. And then down here is kind of the emergency break glass where we can, something happens, you deploy a policy, you really need to change it. You can exclude that uh, particular source or we can disable the individual rule over or the overlying policy. So this is kind of a nice way, easy button to um, something happened, you need to get back to uh, business as usual. You can kind of disable whatever happened and then go back and triage it and, and fix it uh, while people get back to doing what they're supposed to do. So this UI is used by a lot of organizations, but we also have customers with much more mature DLP programs in place that basically manage both the policy creation as well as the incident workflow um, out of band using our API. So this could be ServiceNow or other platforms, but uh, for most things you wanna do, this single pane of glass will consolidate all of your policies, both the endpoint, the network, and the data at rest, all from this nice little view, give you a whole bunch of role-based access control uh, regarding what you have uh, visibility to and what you can do. And I hope this was helpful. If not, uh, we can definitely do some more whiteboarding and drill down into uh, additional features and capabilities. Thanks for your time.